Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Coy. This is CNN 10, the best 10 minutes in news because of you. It's Wednesday, May 8th. I'm looking forward to using one of your vocab words in today's show. Lots of stellar submissions. So thank you for boosting our vocabulary. First up, we start in Israel, where the country's military known as the Israel Defense Forces, or IDF, has taken control of the Palestinian side of the Rafah crossing. That's a key point of entry for aid coming into Gaza. It's located on the border with Egypt. The assault began overnight on Tuesday with Israeli airstrikes on Rafah. Medical officials there say 23 people were killed. Soon after, the IDF rolled tanks into the area, replacing Palestinian flags with Israeli flags. This new offensive comes as ceasefire negotiations between Israel and the terror organization Hamas, which runs Gaza, have hit a snag. Hamas has agreed to a deal that would require them to release 33 Israeli hostages taken during its October 7th assault on Israel. In exchange, Israel would release hundreds of Palestinian prisoners and pause the war for an indefinite period to allow for the rebuilding of Gaza. So far, Israel has rejected the deal. The UN Secretary General is urging both sides to keep talking. It would be tragic if weeks of intense diplomatic activity for peace in Gaza yield no ceasefire, no release of hostages, and a devastating offensive in Rafah. I reiterate my appeal for both parties to show the political courage and spare no effort to secure an agreement now, to stop the bloodshed, to free the hostages, and to help stabilize a region which is still at risk of explosion. Before moving into Rafah on Tuesday, Israel warned residents to evacuate. But earlier in the war, Israel had told Palestinians in northern Gaza to flee south towards that city. So this new offensive is leaving people who originally fled to Rafah in dire circumstances with few options on where to go. Next, we head to Oklahoma, where giant hail, hurricane force winds, and devastating tornadoes tore through parts of the state Monday night, killing at least one person and injuring multiple others. Tornadoes and inclement weather also causing considerable damage in Missouri and Tennessee. The residents of Barnesdale, Oklahoma, are all too familiar with this kind of destruction. This tornado was the second in a little over a month to hit the small city with a population of about 1,000 people. CNN's Lucy Cavanaugh is on the ground to show us the damage up close. Behind me, a residential home, the parts that were built out of stone still sort of standing, but a lot of this no longer li livable. The family will have to find another place to live. As we walk over here, this was a garage structure that also was a part of this property. And um, that tornado, the direct hit here, flattening this structure i don't know if you could see it um, behind me but over there is a pickup truck it just gives you a sense of the scale of this destruction this region is not yet out of the woods millions in the midwest are still at risk of strong tornadoes ripping through the area and millions more are vulnerable to damaging storms Boeing's Starliner needs a do-over. We told you earlier this week that the new spacecraft was supposed to take off Monday night with astronauts on board for the first time. But shortly before launch, there was an issue with the rocket that propels the capsule into space. CNN's Kristen Fisher explains what happened. About two hours before lifting off with two NASA astronauts, Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore, on top inside that Starliner spacecraft, the ground teams discovered an issue with a oxygen relief valve on the second stage of the Atlas V rocket. This is a valve that essentially releases some pressure from the oxygen, the liquid oxygen uh, that's building up in the tank. Uh, liquid oxygen is one of the propellants that fuels the Atlas V into space. And so the United Launch Alliance says this is typically a pretty minor issue that they've experienced before. They know how to troubleshoot. If it had only been uh, a payload on top, a non-human payload, like satellites or something like that, um, they would have gone ahead and launched. They say that those satellites would already be up in space now. But because this was the first time that they actually had people on top, the first crewed test flight of Boeing Starliner spacecraft, they decided out of an abundance of caution to hold off. 
NASA and Boeing may try for another launch on Friday. When it does take off, the spacecraft is headed to the International Space Station, where it will spend about a week before coming home. NASA is welcoming a second company with which it can partner on missions to the ISS. SpaceX has already been flying astronauts there since 2020. In South Africa, rescue operations are underway in the city of George after a multi-story building collapse left dozens of people trapped under debris. Rescue teams are working quickly to save as many people as possible. At least 26 people have been pulled from the rubble, but dozens more are missing and at least six people have been killed. South Africa's president is offering his condolences to families who lost their loved ones. He's also launching an investigation into the cause of the collapse in order to help prevent something like this from happening in the future. 10 second trivia. Which of these countries has the largest population in the world? The United States, India, China, or Nigeria? If you said India, then India. With more than 1.4 billion people, the South Asian nation edged out China last year as the world's most populous country, according to the UN. India, the most populous country, has nearly a billion people who are eligible to vote. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is seeking a third term in office, but with a billion people, it's not easy to keep track of who voted and who hasn't. So India developed a special system. It involves purple ink. CNN's Ivana Scatola has more. This purple mark has become a symbol of Indian elections. It's painted on with something called indelible ink, meaning it can't be removed easily. The Indian Election Commission has used this practice for more than seven decades to prevent fraud and duplicate votes. When a voter arrives at the booth, the ink is painted onto the left index finger, leaving a stain. Right from the Prime Minister to the, uh, to the most common person, everybody flashes their fingers from celebrities, from film stars, everybody. That is a mark of uh, democracy. Although it's hard to remove, it does eventually wash off after around two weeks, depending on the person's skin. What makes the ink last this long is strictly confidential. It's a secret formula that hasn't changed since 1951. What we do know is that the chemical compound silver nitrate is a key ingredient. When this formula comes in contact with the uh, sunlight, it, uh, uh, it reacts with the skin and the uh, color emerges. The company Mysore Varnish and Paints has the exclusive rights to make and distribute the liquid to polling booths across the entire country. This year, the company has prepared 2.7 million ink vials, its largest order to date. Each vial contains enough ink to mark 700 voters. Our ink is being used to mark every elector. It is a very proud moment. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10 is a peel good story. Latoya Keeling made some friends with two young bulls in a pasture next door by doling out a bunch of bananas. They found the fruit appealing, but Latoya was utterly shocked when one of those incorrigible bulls busted through the fence and showed up at her house. She called the police who helped move the bull back to its farm, but not before milking the situation for a few selfies. Here's Latoya's advice. Don't feed young bulls bananas. They're like cats, they'll come back. Now that's a legendary story. Congrats to Miss Bozick's class at Hardy Prep in Chicago. You are our hashtag Your Word Wednesday winner for incorrigible, an adjective meaning incapable of being corrected, amended, or reformed. Well done. Our shout out today goes to Mr. Godoy's class from Shoe Metal Middle School in New Ark, Delaware. We see you and go Tigers. This shout out goes to Aloha Huber Park in Beaverton, Oregon. Thanks to Miss Tofty's class, the seventh graders there for requesting the shout out, you rock. Rise up. Remember, the day doesn't make you, you make the day. So let's make it a great one, right? I'm Koi, this is CNN 10, and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>